part of the reason we went into Iraq uh, was uh, the main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a very curious statement. And a New York Times piece of a couple of weeks ago was a very curious piece that left more questions unanswered than answered in my mind. And I'm so glad that uh, our next guest, along with Senator Rick Santorum, uh, wrote this wonderful piece, uh, George W. Bush's Puzzling WMD Cover-Up. And we welcome in Pete Holkstra, former chairman of the House Intelligence Committee and former Republican congressman, of course, from Michigan. Congressman, it's been too long. Great to see you. I, when that story came out a couple of weeks ago, I, I must admit, I took the, uh, the, the, uh, the route of saying, see, see, there were weapons of mass destruction. But I, I, I kind of knew deep inside that I wasn't getting to the heart of it because the piece talked about how the Pentagon had known this for years, I think dating back to 06 or maybe even earlier, and that meant George Bush knew. And why didn't the Bush administration tout the fact that, hey, we've had soldiers who have been injured from these chemicals, these, these weapons of mass destruction that they stumbled upon, which proves he had them. Yeah, and I think that's, uh, you know, why didn't the Bush administration tell anybody? But more importantly on this, Steve, is, you know, Congress, Rick Santorum, I was chairman of the Intelligence Committee. We were asking the Pentagon. I made 10 different trips to Iraq, and on each one of those trips, we asked, you know, what are you finding in WMD? And they said, Congressman, Chairman, you know, we're really not finding anything, a shell here or there, uh, not anything. And in reality, they knew it. They had found over 10,000 shells, and they withheld that information from Congress. They withheld it from the American people. Uh, today, there's a story uh, here in Washington, and uh, now David Kay, uh, the head of the Iraq survey group, the group that was assigned with specifically with the task of looking for WMD. He's now coming out publicly and saying, well, the Bush administration uh, never really supported the effort. And now he's saying, you really got to worry about these things. They may get into the hands of ISIS. When Rick Santorum and I talked about some of the weapons shells that they found, what did David Kay tell us and what did he tell the American people? Uh, that stuff is no different than what you'll find under your kitchen sink. Uh, this rewriting of history and withholding information from the American people in Congress has absolutely got to stop. All right, all right, and I agree with you, whether it's on the Republican <laughs> side or the Democrat side, and that's what we're talking about here absolutely. today as a Republican. But what could the motivation be? You could almost rationalize it, it would be wrong, but rationalize it if it would have made the administration look bad. But the, you know the chant, Bush lied, people died, they still say it today. Why, why wouldn't he be running? Why wouldn't the whole administration be running to the microphones and the cameras to talk about this? Well, they had a couple of things uh, that, you know, I've heard is how, how they explain this. One is uh, people attribute it to the political uh, officials in the White House saying, you know what, we lost that argument. We don't want to go back. We don't want to cover this old information. Uh, we don't want to look back. We're just going to look forward. Uh, another thing is they've said, well, you know, uh, we wanted to make sure that it didn't fall into the hands of Al-Qaeda and all that because we didn't know where all the arms caches were. Well, neither one of those hold, you know, hold any water. Number one, I was part of the gang of eight, uh, eight top leaders on intel in, in Congress. They have to give us that information. The second thing that you'll find on this is that political officials in the White House can't be making the decision All right, as to what I'm, I'm information I'm will be shared with Congress you, uh, and what information will is not it, be uh, shared is that, with Congress. Uh, we lost them or? Yeah, there's no oh, explanation okay. for what happened. Yeah, yeah, no. All right, uh, I'm glad we got you back. We lost you there for a second. But I'm glad we got you back. Let me ask you oh, this. Uh, you got, no, no, not your fault. Uh, you have quite a governor's okay. race going on there in, uh, in the state of Michigan. Talk about it. Well, we've got a governor who uh, came into office, uh, his campaign, I know it well. I ran against him in the Republican primary. Uh, he ran a campaign as the outsider, the nerd who would go in and get Michigan fixed. That's exactly who Rick Snyder has been. Uh, he has been a policy wonk. He has got himself deeply enmeshed in the 
running of the state of Michigan. Michigan's running better now than it has run in years. Uh, we're rebounding, uh, but Rick is not a politician. That's a strength and that's a weakness, which means he hasn't communicated very effectively to the people of Michigan exactly what he has done and why that is going to make Michigan a better state in the long run and how that's gonna bring jobs and economic growth back to the state. I think at the end of the day, uh, Rick is going to win because people are seeing that Michigan is rebounding. Our housing prices are up. Our unemployment rate is down. Household income is up. Everything's moving in the right direction. Rick's done a great job. I think the people of Michigan are gonna recognize that. All right, uh, Congressman, great to talk to you again, sir, and great peace uh, with you and uh, our friend Rick Santorum. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for covering it, Steve. Appreciate it. My my pleasure. Uh, Pete Hoekstra, ladies and gentlemen, very, very uh, curious and very, very frightening. And he's right. It, it's, a, it's not only a revisionist history, inaccurate, withholding information, and, and, and the danger now exists that these, uh, these weapons will fall into the hands of ISIS. We'll be back with New Jersey Congressman. He's my congressman, by the way, uh, Scott Garrett, after the break. But first, let's uh, check in on the Kansas Senate race with our Road to the Midterms update next on Newsmax Television. Republicans are on an 80-year winning streak in the Sunflower State. Independent Greg Orman hopes to break that. He's challenging Republican incumbent Senator Pat Roberts, who's looking to win a fourth term. It's a seat he must hold on to. Republicans need to pick up six seats without losing any in order to tip the Senate their way. Orman is keeping this race extremely tight. His main message for voters, vote against the status quo. If polls are any indicator, that message is hitting home. In a recent Remington Research Group survey, voters gave incumbent Roberts a 48% unfavorable rating. Orman's was 40%. Political analysts say Congress's low approval rating and Roberts' tenure are working against him. That's why Roberts is desperately trying to link Orman to the president who only has approval from, on average, 35% of Kansas voters. A USA Today article quotes Roberts calling Orman a liberal Democrat who is using the independent label as a cover-up. 